a lot of the course that I teach for producing talks about a self-produced and directing projects that you self-produce and bring into the world because you want to be a producer, you want to be a director, you want to make it happen. Sometimes what happens is that other people ask you to produce or direct, and I didn't really take that angle from um, for my course. And so a lot of these videos are going to be talking about when you have to answer to somebody else who wants this project made and you are working on their behalf. So the way that this project started with um, Peter is, who's the director, writer, producer, is another producer, you can have several producers, is that he wanted to make this movie. He knows that I produce, that I'm a producer. He said, hey, can you help me produce this? And this all happened over Facebook, actually. And so then we sat down and the next step after that is to have a phone conversation. It's easier than emailing back and forth. And so I thought of a number of questions that I had in order to start getting assets and things we need for the production. What was his budget? That's always usually the first question. Although in this this time around, we had that as a later question because a lot of that is going to become clear as we were talking about uh, what his vision was for the movie. So was he looking at special effects? How did he want to shoot it? What did he already have? What's free for him? Um, as because he's already probably started putting together some pieces for the producing. So he already had his actors and he already maybe has a location, but he's asking me to get a better location for him. And so there are, there are aspects, but he doesn't have any crew. So, but he might have some crew, but he wants me to look into that a little bit more firmly. So there are things that I am specifically meant to do. And mostly I think it's going to be an organizing thing where I have to do a breakdown of the script. And so, and that's making sure that every time I read something that I need to get or somebody needs to get, like I've uh, listed that in a particular way so that when the shoot day, the first shoot day comes, we are clear on everything we need and we have it. So, but I just wanted to emphasize that that's usually the next step. So somebody contacts you in whatever way, email, texting, who knows, um, Snapchat, I don't know, Instagram, hey, this is a picture of my script, produce it, I don't know. <laughs> and so, um, and so it, then it's usually a, a little bit of back and forth. You read the script, do you like it? If you do, you have a conversation about that. And then you get into the specifics of what, how they want to shoot it, what uh, camera do they have in mind, do they have any equipment, are they looking for uh, some crew that have equipment, um, or do they want it on 4K, what venue is it going to be shooting on, because if you, or, sh or like presenting, so if you're presenting just for YouTube, you don't really need it to be 4K, unless you are looking at the longevity of it, so for example, SNL shoots in 4K, and we'll have a whole conversation about 4K, but SNL shoots in 4K because A, they have the money and the resources to do it, but also because of the longevity of it, because as technology, displaying technology gets better, it's gonna make sense. Because if you watch the sketches from like the 70s, they're in like fuzzy television form, <laughs> three, four and all that. And so, and it looks low quality compared to what the viewers are used to today. The other awesome, I, guess, I don't want to get into a 4K conversation, but my point is it's more expensive too. So for a, you know, low budget producer or something that's just going on YouTube, it might be unnecessary. And so you ask these questions and as you do more producing, you get used to asking these questions and you the most important question is what's the budget what were your numbers sometimes they'll ask you that they'll be like what do you think i can do it for and you're like uh it's really that's a hard question to ask especially if you haven't recently most of the the producing i've been doing has been for documentary and promos for other people where I'm a solo shooter and I'm going in with my equipment and my lighting kit and everything. So I'm keeping the cost really well down, 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 and I'm editing it. I'm like one man, one woman show here for uh, production. So when I am asked for a narrative that I haven't done in a while, haven't produced in New York very much, no, really not. I haven't produced in New York, I've produced in LA. I had to, I told him, I'm basing my numbers on LA numbers and not on New York numbers, which could be different for location for all that. So 
I just uh, wanted to make this video in order to say the next step is the phone conversation and have your questions ready because if you have done this before, it's the same questions you'd ask yourself. How do I want to shoot this? What's the intention? It's all, there's a lot of this in my course. I'm trying not to make it like, take my course, but I talk about this a lot in my course because you start off with like, what's the final intention? Am I doing this for real? Am I doing this to get other jobs? Am I doing this to, and you talk about that internally so that when you produce it, you are thinking about the final outcome. And that's how you can answer questions when you're in pre-production.